This episode was filmed during the circuit breaker season in Singapore and Problem Brothers would like to take this chance to thank all our healthcare workers and our frontline staff out there who are continuing to work hard to keep Singapore safe. Thank you for your hard work and dedication and love for Singapore and also for our audience and clients out there. Do continue to keep yourself and your family safe and let's play our part. Stay home, stay safe during this season. And this episode, we're going to talk about whether should you panic sell your property during this COVID-19 pandemic period after the circuit breaker is over. Let's go. And yes, we do have a couple of questions coming in from our audience and some of them are asking should they quickly put out their property in the market after the circuit breaker is over because they're a little bit worried that because of the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide, there's going to be a dip or it's going to affect some of the property prices in Singapore. So I think before we answer this question, we need to know the context of everybody's different situation. So maybe I would like to ask back this question as well. So just to clarify exactly what kind of context are we talking about. So are you talking about your property that currently your family is occupying uh, as in your home owner? ownership kind of property or are we talking about your investment property because these are two very different objectives are you planning to sell because you have already committed to another property right before the circuit breaker season or is it because you already have this plan at the start of 2020 you want to move because your current space is too small or is it because you need to switch location closer to your work or because you want to buy somewhere that is within one to two kilometers of your kids school that uh, they're going to start school or start p1 next year so we need to know what is the context of the situation why do we want to know that is because there's really no need to panic to put a property in the market right after the circuit breaker season. So one school of thought is that you can just take it that this two months is like a blackout season. It's a blackout period that nobody does anything. Nobody is actively looking for properties in the market because they can't really physically go and view properties. Although they can virtually view properties online using home tours and stuff like that, but they cannot physically look at a resale property per se. New launches, of course, is different. I mean, people can still look at the virtual tours that show flats and stuff like that. But for resale properties, I think a lot of people are still very used to going for physical viewing. So have a look at the current condition and stuff like that. So I think there's really no need to be in a panic mode to put property out in the market unless you have a very specific objective. So the objective is very, very important because if, for example, you have already purchased a property right before the circuit breaker season and then you're committed, let's say, to a new launch property or you have committed to a resale property and asked for a slightly longer option period and now because of the circuit breaker, this is eating into your option period already because you wanted to, to secure a place first before you put out your property in the market to avoid the ABSC and stuff like that. So I think it really depends on the situation. Now, probably let's talk about the fundamentals first. Singapore homes ownership is really high. Out of the world's home ownership percentage, we're at about 91, 92%. Now, of course, for this home ownership percentage, about 78% of our residents here, they own HDB properties and then probably about 16% own condominiums and apartments and the balance 5% own landed properties. So in terms of home ownership status is really high plus our public housing in terms of the first batch of BTOs is really at a subsidized rate. So a lot of people, they definitely have holding power. They are not in a panic mode to just sell their property that they're already living in right now and they have kids and stuff like that. So because of the home ownership status, I don't think a lot of people will like panic sell in a sense because we're all occupying our own property for our own needs. Now, if let's say you're talking about your second property that you have already bought for investment, you're putting out for rental and stuff like that, and then you think that, hey, for my second property, I think I better do something about it because I'm a little bit worried about the price movement. Then I think, yes, for investment property, you would then need to take a different approach to look at the fundamentals, to look at how is the performance in terms of pricing. If let's say after the circuit breaker season, are there any other neighbors out there that's trying to panic sell and things like that? Because if you're talking about a condominium project, the behavior of your neighbors will definitely affect everybody's valuation in that particular project itself. Now, if you are talking about landed property and it's your second or third landed property out there that you are putting up for rental and things like that, then I think there's no need to worry because landed property is very, very resilient. The amount of supply is really low and a lot of people bought in the heydays, in the old days, they bought low before 2008 season. And so a lot of people out there that are holding on to their landed properties, they bought like inter terraces for one over a million dollars and right now today it's like three million dollars. So there's really no need for them to panic sell in a sense. So I think for landed property is very resilient. For condominiums, property, if it's freehold, it's resilient as well. If it's 99 years, uh, great location and owner occupancy rate is very high. I think people are enjoying their property out there. But of course, if you're talking about unemployment rates on the rise, and if let's say a lot of people, they want to downgrade 
because of unemployment and if it really happens then definitely I think there will be some impact and of course if you are in the situation whereby there might be an upcoming job loss or unemployment or business loss and you think that it will be wiser for you to downsize or to sell the place and move to probably a lower quantum property after you have laid out all your options and discuss with your family and stuff like that you can also explore the deferment scheme which was provided by MES and you can apply that with your bank that allows you to defer your mortgage payments all the way until December 2020 we think that this is actually a very great initiative that allows you to probably sit down and analyze on the table based on the balance savings that you have in your CPF account or your cash savings like what is the maximum period that you're able to sustain your mortgage while you continue to work on your job or your business and stuff like that so if you happen to be in that situation do click on the link below we have also attached the FAQ by MES right here for your understanding the other thing that I want to talk about is the disparity effect what is the disparity effect now pre-2008 lemon crisis the landed property prices were very very close to the private condo and apartment price quantum in the market just to give you some context for example like district 14 for 4 beta 99 years condo probably there's about 900,000 but you can already get an inter-terrace as freehold at about 1 mil to 1.2 million in probably district 28 or district 19 area and there was this very close gap in terms of condominium pricing and landed pricing so there was this disparity effect and right after 2009 April suddenly the landed price just shot up and it just shot up all the way till date it has grown very very rapidly during that season together with the condo prices but it shot up way higher than the condo price index of course now it's on the gradual growth but whenever there's this kind of disparity the buyers will suddenly realize that there is a disparity in terms of the asset class from the condo class to the landed class why is the price so close does it make more sense for me to actually buy landed property there was also a season where the HGB prices was actually very close to the condominium prices in terms of the cash that is needed to buy a HGB property for example from 2008 all the way to 2013 when the HGB price was soaring upwards before they took a dip from 2013 because of all the government change in measures non-valuation for sellers plus a lot of BTOs that's the link from resale properties and stuff like that so that's another part of the HGB story that period I still remember a lot of buyers out there in the market when they were thinking hey the CUV is so high I have to pay 50, 60, 70,000 plus the 5% cash down payment for the bank loan all in is like 100,000 plus renovation 100 over 1,000 I might as well probably just buy a $1 million three beta condominium in the same areas whenever there's such disparity the other asset class that is slightly more superior in terms of the asset status will tend to probably have a bit more impact whereby the demand might then shift over there sometimes if that more premium asset class is too pricey people might shift back to the other asset class as well so I still remember back in the 2008 season after the Lehman Brothers crisis in October yes there was a dip in pricing if you look at the URA price index there was a dip down in terms of the pricing curve but I still remember at that time the transactions weren't a lot although there were price movement that is going downwards but in terms of the recovery was really quick because by 2009 April the price just instantly shot up all the way until 2013 because of the series of cooling measures that came down but we have already surpassed the 2013 mark so I think if you're trying to time the market using your currently owner occupied property that you and your family is staying in then I think it's not advisable because the risk is definitely high it's too high because if you're trying to time it trying to sell it go and rent and then hope that the market will have a downturn and then you can buy something that is cheaper you're putting a lot of things on the line there's a lot of opportunity cost that you are probably sacrificing and things like that so let's say if it's your owner occupied property do have a little bit more consideration in terms of the intangible benefits that you're sacrificing is it worth it if you really think it's worth it and you think that there might be a chance because i want to switch location or switch school and stuff like that then probably can do a bit of planning about that our guideline is that for owner occupied property we usually advise our clients not to time the market if you say that hey i noticed that there's a disparity effect in the property that i'm looking at the asset class that i'm hoping to go to and i think that i should definitely exit from here and switch to the other asset class because that asset class has more room for growth there's more potential for growth then I think is a more valid reason than trying to time the market I think end of the day we should not time the market if it's your own owner occupied property but you should only sell your property if you have a very clear plan so I think importantly we need to be wise in a manner whereby have we actually spread out all the pros and cons of the intangible benefit plus the tangible benefit of the price and movement and stuff like that yeah so welcome to the end of this episode and we hope that the, a little bit of sharing will benefit fit you if you're a seller that's looking for advice right after the circuit breaker our team can come over to meet you to have a look at your property talk a little bit about your selling plans travel a little bit more about what you usually do for our clients marketing campaigns right now of course if you want to have a pre-chat first we have been doing it over zoom with a couple of clients already so you can give us a call at our hotline or give any of our listings manager a call as well if you need advice on investment and buying site uh, you can also call us for a buyer consultation session we hope that you continue to keep yourself and your family 
safe. Of course, we know that this season is tiring. It's not easy with the home-based learning for those of you who have kids. And of course, managing your work, juggling your work at home as well. So everybody remain strong and positive and healthy. Let's fight on and press on. I hope that this will be over soon and continue to watch our content. Thank you so much for supporting us and we see you on the next episode. Take care.